to speak in this morning, aren't we? And uh, we need to be people who listen to what the Lord is revealing to us. You know, I'm really struck that, you know, he has such a love, particularly for those who are lost in our world today, don't we? And really, he's committed to his believers being his hands and feet. And we need to be a people who take up you know, that mandate to, to preach the good news and see lives change as well, don't we? Amen. I want to start this morning, I'm going to read from Romans 13, from verse 11. And it says this, it says, And do this, understand the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your slumber, because your salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here. And this scripture that we've read was written to the church, to the believers, weren't it? And I believe today that the Lord again is saying, you know, to his church, wake up, wake up from the slumber that you've been in. Wake up from that place where you've maybe been um, downcast or, or been pressed down by things that have taken place. Wake up again. You see in that scripture, we see the word slumber. And that is a, that can be a spirit, it can be a power behind slumber that affects people. It affects the believers as well. It affects them in, in ways that, you know, they can become complacent with their walk with Christ, either, either lazy or have, have found that they've lost the passion that they once had for the things of God. It was a calling, really. It was, a, it was an instruction for the church to wake up. And that, I believe, needs to resonate once again within, within the body of Christ because the, that hour is, 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 is already come. And we sometimes treat it, don't we, like we've got all the time in the world, and yet these people each and every day are struck by losing their lives and, and spending an eternity cut off from the Lord. As we're believers and we read through these scriptures, you know, I want to challenge you this morning to you know, come before the Lord honestly and ask him whether there's any areas of your life that are in slumber, that have been affected. Allow him to honestly work through your life and, and look at your life to see if there's anything that needs a waiting, a waiting within your life today. Maybe something that you had once that was that was burning brightly for the Lord, but it's just it's done no more than a simmer now. It's just simmering away. I believe the Lord is saying, wake up. Allow me to look into your life. Allow, come before him honestly, and he will bring into life the things that may have been in slumber. Even things that have been in hibernation. And when we think of hibernation, that's just an extended period of inactivity, isn't it, really? I, mean, I want to encourage you this morning that God is a God who is never inactive. He's always at work within his kingdom. He's always wants to be at work within your lives today. He wants to make you powerful and productive for his kingdom so that you can come into the new seasons that he's got for you. If you think of the word hibernation, it really speaks of a period where in nature where something will go to sleep over a winter period, waiting for spring to come. But we never call to be in hibernation. Do you know them as believers? You can have success even in the dark times, even in the winter times, but the world would say, and the world may be suffering from, we've seen many of them recently, haven't we? But you are called to have victory. Even in the natural, hibernation comes to an end, doesn't it? And I'm saying this morning that God wants to take any areas of your life that have been in hibernation and bring it to an end so that he can, he can bring your life to the fullness that he wants for you and make a, a line the things that have been put away, the things that you push to one side, thinking maybe I'll bring them out when another season comes. Today is that season. Too long, I believe, the church has been in hiding in that hibernation place that God has never called them to be. And I believe this is a period, this is the hour where God is stirring his church, stirring his believers to wake them up so that they will step out in all that he wants to desire for them. And in order to do this, we have to be people who are discerning of the times and the seasons that we're in. If we are discerning of the seasons and of the hour, then it will, it will cause us, it will stir us, to present ourselves before God to, to say, Lord, what is it what is you doing in this season? Not letting just the days and the weeks pass by. 
and find out the part that Jesus Christ wants you personally to play in this hour. You all have a purpose for this hour. In Hebrews 13 and 14 it says, We have no continuing city here. We look for the one to come. You know, your residency is not in the UK. You're a, you're a child of the kingdom. You need to look, and I need to look, for what the kingdom of God is doing and not remain in my own positions that sometimes I put myself in or you put yourself in where we can be comfortable. And I really believe this is so important because there's so much more that is yet to play out for the church that we're going to have as a body of believers in the, in the nations, in this nation and around the world. We're going to have so much part to play in what people would say in the end times, in these end times that we see, but we've never been called to coast alone. Do you know that? Are you coasting today? Honestly, before you look, are you finding yourself in a in a comfortable position where you think this is your lot? Well, let me tell you, this is not that every, this, this is not your lot. Greater days lie ahead for you, but we've got to choose to position ourselves before God and take hold of what He's got for us. He's calling a people who will be awake on observant of the end times. The Bible says that we, you know, Paul says that we are not unaware of what the enemy is doing. So we've got to be a little bit believers today that discern the times, not just with our natural eyes, but spiritually, and understand what the Lord wants to do in these times. It's easy for us, isn't it, to see what's happening in the world, and we all do it if we make assumptions with what our natural eyes see and then we, we piece it together and think oh God is moving in this way or God is moving in that way or God is moving within that because we allow our natural eyes to make that assumption for us and that, you know the Lord has checked me many times on that you know where he's checked me on, on situations where I've just allowed my, what I see in the natural to start to piece it together and I think he's moving and yet he's not moving in that at all, but he's moving in a different direction. We've never been called to rely upon our natural eyes, but to walk by faith and be alert in our spirit, in our spiritual walk and our spiritual eyes, so that we can receive revelation, we can receive knowledge of what God is doing. And this is for your benefit. This is for your benefit today. Sometimes these things can seem hard, can't they? Because it costs you to invest in these things. It costs you to come before the Lord, but it's for your benefit. And I, and I, I believe that it's, it's so important that we become practiced in these things today. The Bible is very clear that in the end times, there will be people who will be deceived in the, in the last days. They will follow what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn away from truth and into error, the Bible tells us. How do we avoid that? We stay close to God, don't we? Stay connected to Him. And we don't allow, um, as I've mentioned, our natural abilities, our natural sight, to allow us to think that God is moving in one way and make assumptions in that area. And He will reveal what He's doing within your life, he will reveal what he's doing through the church in the nations today. A very well read passage in Amos 3 and 7, I'm sure you all know, he says, surely the Lord God will do nothing but he will reveal his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Now he will reveal truth. The Lord always reveals truth. We should never allow the lies of the enemy to encroach or cut in in any way. Let's be discerning in these times. Many people say many things, don't they? I mean, you, go, you only have to go onto YouTube and people are claiming this or claiming that. But we've got to stay focused on what the Word of God says and what He reveals. Yeah. You'll recall that Jesus said to the religious leaders who demanded a sign, he said to them, when evening comes, you say, the weather will be fair, 
for the sky is red, and in the morning today it will be stormy, for the sky is red and overcast. He said, he said, you know how to interpret the appearance of the sky, but not the signs of the times. They could see in the natural, but because of their position of heart, and that Jesus called them wicked and an adulterous generation, they were unable to recognize and see into that supernatural. They were unable to even see the Messiah who was stood before them. And why is this important for us today? I believe we're accelerating towards his return. I was reading that, that first scripture there. You know, the, the hour is here. We're accelerating towards his return. God does not want his people to be unaware of what he is doing in these days. He doesn't want us to be in slumber. He wants us to be alert. That's why I believe the Lord is, again, seeking believers who will take on that role of being watchmen today. Who will see out onto the horizon to see and receive what is taking place and will speak boldly and will speak truth to people to alert even people within the church into action it may be those people who you know have an understanding of the things of God but again have come complacent I believe God is raising up them watchmen again we're going to read now from Ezekiel 33 verse 1 Ezekiel 33 and verse 1 and it says this in fact the heading says renewal of Ezekiel's call by a watchman but maybe people have been called to be them watchmen or much women if you want to say that way today but have never really taken that up to, to the extent that God has won maybe they picked it up for a period and then put it back down I believe God is looking for people to raise them up to be watchmen as I said this is what the word of God says in verse 33 and chapter 33 and verse 1 it says the word of the Lord came to me son of man speak to your people and say to them, when I bring the sword against the land and against the people of the land, choose one of their men and make him their watchman. And he sees the sword coming against the land and blows the trumpet to warn the people. Then if anyone hears the trumpet but does not heed the warning, then the sword comes and takes their wife, their blood will be on their own head. Since they heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not heed the, the warning that their blood, the warning, their blood would be on their own head. If they have heard it, heeded the warning, they would have saved themselves. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people, and the, and the sword comes and takes life, that person's life will be taken because of their sin. But I will hold the watchman accountable for their blood. He says in verse 7, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the people of Israel, so hear the word I speak and give them warning from me. Quite a, that's a, quite a well-known verse, isn't it? It's a verse you may have heard before, but powerful. It speaks of watchmen being positioned, being called. But it also speaks of a sword coming on the land and taking those who do not take or don't take heed and they're taken into captivity they'll lose their lives for those who are left behind but we have an amazing opportunity today to be people who respond he wants us to respond that's why he positions watchmen and he's seeking watchmen today because of his love for us and his desire for his people not to be found unaware not to be found in slumber but to be awake and be alert I wonder how many people he's appointed to be watchmen that have never taken up a calling I wonder how many people have, as I said have taken it up or put it back down 
Maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you know that the Lord has called you into that type of ministry where he wants to reveal things to you, where you, where you, where you will be someone who will be bold to, to, to speak to the people. <clears throat> and it's a ministry that should not be taken lightly either, should it? Because it comes with, with warnings and responsibility. But we've seen that passage that there is outcomes that come. There's an opportunity to, to be free, to preserve life. I wonder today that when the Lord looks at our, our nation, what is, what is it he actually sees in our land today? Will he see faith? Will he see righteousness? Or does he see, does he see sin abounding? Does he see, see that we have a, a nation that really is ungodly today? But then he looks to see those who are speaking out and watchmen who are, who are standing, in, and standing in that space, standing in that gap today. And hearing that trumpet blowing, or blowing that trumpet to warn the people. You know, in the, in the Bible, often the, the trumpet was a, a sign of danger or even an announcement of God's intent or God's move. How much more do we need to hear today when the trumpet is sounded? But don't misunderstand me today. The trumpet was to get people's attention. It was never to send them into fleeing or into hiding today. And there are too many, there are too many people who are in hiding today. Even within the church, we see that people have hidden themselves away. You just think about some of the seasons that we've been through. You know, the COVID situations, where we've had people who've gone into hiding. You've never seen them since. Yeah? You've not seen them, you've not seen them back serving the Lord like they once did. And hiding is always based in fear and captivity, do you know that? And God does not do <coughs> in fear when he comes to set the captives free. And I believe this trumpet, the trumpet that is being sounded today, is a warning. Firstly, to the to the body of Christ to wake up. To get their attention because God wants to move, He wants to move in power, He wants to set people free, not just within His, his body, but also heal, heal the land and, and take hold of people's lives who are broken today, who are destitute today, who are in desperate need of a Savior, who are in need of deliverance and being set free. We shouldn't be concerned as believers when we hear that, that trumpet that gets our attention. Regardless of the situations, regardless of the troubles that we, we see, even if you're going to be a watchman, you may see things that are far off that the Lord reveals to you. You know, that might be troubles coming. I'm sure there will. You know, I believe there will be many more troubles. But we're not to be alarmed, we're not to be concerned, it's not to cause us to go into hiding. Because I want to build you up in this, that the Lord has made a way that there is a room for every believer who chooses to walk in step with the Holy Spirit to be victorious today. And to progress, even in the most difficult of times, most difficult of situations and circumstances, there is a way through the Lord where you can progress in the things of God. You don't have to go into hiding. You don't have to shut yourself away. You just need to embrace what he's doing and be in step with the Holy Spirit and he will cause you to take and occupy. Mm -hmm. Occupy land, occupy territory that the enemy has once held. He will give you victory regardless of what the season is. You know, we don't have to be a people who are shaken by the things that we hear. I spoke earlier on our natural eyes. You will know as well as I do, you cannot flip the news on or, or pick up any newspaper, not that many people read them now, but you can't look at anything without almost being bombarded with things, can you? From, we've had the COVID situations and various other things in, in that sort of, similar to that, to fuel crisis, that's the next one, isn't it now? The fuel crisis. 
global warming, climate change. You know, I recently heard it put it this way, it's not global warming, but it's global groaning. Yeah? We see in the word of God that our, our, our climate, if you will, will be shaken. Not because of man's influence, because the word of God says so in the last days. It says in Romans 8 and verse 22 to 4, it says, We know the whole creation has been groaning and in pains of childbirth right, right until the present time. Again, even this is something where we need to discernment. You know, we don't have to go along with the things that we see on the news. We don't have to go along with the things that we're told will affect our lives. You, know, you don't have to be concerned because of fuel crisis. Yeah? The Holy Spirit should be your fuel today, the one who's burning bright, and he's never in crisis. Do you know that? <laughs> we don't have to be concerned because we're being told you know, this global warming's come in and it's irreversible. We don't have to be concerned with these things. There is a way even through these times where the believer can have victory. But we have to seek understanding and be alert and discern the seasons we're in. Choose to find out. I encourage you today, choose to find out what the Lord is doing and what he's planning in these seasons ahead. Don't make assumptions. He may reveal to you part of what he's doing. He may reveal to me another part. But when we come together, we can begin to see what the Lord is doing and how he's moving. We work together as a body of Christ. Will you respond? If you hear that trumpet, will you allow it to get your attention today? Because I, as I said earlier, I believe we are very much accelerating towards end times. I mean, you will, there will be more troubles that come. Do you know that? The word of God is very clear on that. But we can have vi even victory in them times. I believe it's a season for us to stock up right now and to build and invest in the Lord. To seek his face and prepare ourselves individually and as a body for what lies ahead. Even the battles we will face ahead. I believe that's the season we're in now. A season of preparation and stocking up. It's not a time for us to delay things or put stuff off for another time. But we've got to be people who hear truth and, and put things into action. You think of the parable of the of the ten virgins. Five of them were wise when they prepared. They took with them oil in jars. They were prepared long before the bridegroom came. And I believe that's the season we're in now where the Lord is looking for those who will be wise in their preparation, preparing themselves before them for any storm or any situation that would come. Too many have been shaken. Jesus told a parable, didn't he, of um, the man who built his house upon the rock. It says in Matthew 24, it says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house upon sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. We've seen that passage that the same circumstances, the same troubles came against us, against both builders there, but one stood because he was prepared. He put his foundations in the living God. And I'm saying today, we need to be a people, and I include myself in this, who prepare themselves for what lies ahead, to stop up in the things of God. This is not a season just to let it coast by. God is looking for those, I believe, who, are, who will come before him and receive from him, will prepare themselves, ready themselves for what he's about to do. I've been recently reading through Genesis, and I'm reading the story of Joseph. And many of you will know that story. But I, I saw within that recently some, 
some insights that I want to share really to encourage you this morning and, and some parallels with I think where we're at with, with the church in general and as believers. You'll know the story very well that Joseph received dreams that he shared with his brothers and his parents that didn't go down well, did they? Mm -hmm. eh? It wasn't received well at that time. Wrong season. Wrong season for releasing. And because of these things, his brothers were jealous of him and rejected him. They threw him into a well and then sold him into slavery. So here he is, he's had the promise of God now. Because of season release, he's found himself in a place of captivity. But God had not finished with his life. He, he, he gave him favour. But yet he was then falsely accused by Potiphar's wife in Egypt and thrown into prison. It has seemed like a hopeless situation. He was overlooked in that prison, even after helping other people escape. Ironic, isn't it? Yeah? He was overlooked. But at just the right time, he was raised up. You know, he, he received through the law an interpretation of Pharaoh's dreams that nobody else could interpret. And he told him that there would be seven good years followed by seven years of famine throughout the entire land and beyond. It would impact everybody. And God raised him up in many troubles to be on, on his second, he says, to Pharaoh in the land. And he was put in charge of running the whole country and making preparation for the seasons that lie ahead. I believe the Lord has placed the church in that position today. And then even at the end, we see Joseph's father were reconciled to him, and they settled in the land of Goshen, which means a place of comfort and plenty. In that story, I know I just skimmed over it really there, but that story is absolutely packed with truths. But it struck me as I was reading them things, like, you know, I believe the Lord was revealing stuff to me even about, as I shared, seasons of storage, seasons of preparation for what lies ahead. We're going to read now from Genesis 41. Just a portion of that story, what I've, I've just shared there. Genesis 41 and verse 49, 48, sorry. It says, during those seven years, so in preparation, during the good times, he prepared. In the times of abundance, he made provision for what lay ahead. During the seven years, Joseph collected all the excess food in the land of Egypt and stored it in the cities. In every city, he laid up the food from the fields around it. So Joseph stored up the grain in such abundance, like the sands of the sea, that he stopped keeping track of it, for it was beyond measure. We're going to jump now to just to verse 53. And it says this. It says, The seven years of abundance in Egypt came to an end. And the seven years of famine began, just as Joseph has said. There was a famine in all, in, in all the other lands, but in the whole land of Egypt there was food. When all the, the Egyptians began to feel the famine, they cried, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Then Pharaoh told all the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what he tells you. This story, we see that there was a commissioning of a work in the year of abundance to stockpile. A national gathering of provisions took place. It would have took a tremendous effort to you know, even bring in that grain, but it was worth it, was it not? And he, not, he, he didn't just collect the grain, he tactically positioned store houses in the cities for the times that lay ahead. And I believe the Lord has tactically positioned these churches for the times that lay, lay ahead, me and you. And, and it 
goes on to say that he drew, he really drew upon that season of abundance when the famine came. And the reason I'm sharing this is that Holy God is saying, stock up now, prepare yourselves now for this, in this season, what is going to lie ahead. Invest in him now for what lies ahead. Be wise in your investments, making him your priority, allowing him to equip you with someone who knows what it is to be intimate with the Lord and invest in him so that he can expand his works for your life that he has for you. He will plant seed in you now that will, that will be sustain you in times ahead. He will give you gifts now that he will release and bring you to fullness at the right time. Hopefully this morning, what I'm sharing is stirring you to go in deep into the things that God has for you. Not tomorrow, not in another season, but now. Make that decision now. And in order to allow ourselves to stock up on what God has for us, there may need to be a requirement to make space. You know as well as I do, if you've got new furniture coming in your house, you have to clear out, don't you? You get rid of the old and bring in the new. You have to make room. And I believe the Lord is saying today that he will work with you to make room, get rid of the garbage, the things that you may be not even aware of that you have in your possessions that, that need to be removed so he can give you the provision that he needs for the future. Allow him to be somebody who will deal with things within your life, even things that are deep-rooted that you may not be aware of. Things within your personality that can have power behind you. God wants to deal with it so you can be the person he wants you you're called to be in the, in the seasons ahead. And you can stop up in him. And I'm talking spiritually here now. I'm not talking doomsday, doomsday bunkers <laughs> with 6,000 tins of baked beans some corn, corn bait, whatever you think is, I don't know. 10,000 toilet rolls, we've seen that, didn't we, in COVID? <laughs> People just absorbed all the toilet rolls, didn't they? They wiped the shelves clean, didn't they? You see what I did there with the toilet roll, right? Uh, <laughs> something has got him. Yeah. You know, that was driven out of fear and panic. We, we, had, we had to prepare out of obedience and love. Love to the king. Because the preparation will give you that foundation to be able to stand and be victorious in the days that lie ahead. And it will cost you. It will cost you to start to prepare. Jesus told the church in Revelations, he says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so that you become rich. So we're not to take hold of any old thing, you wouldn't just bring any old tack into your house, would you? If you needed spoken furniture, if you needed some furniture today, you wouldn't just go and find any old stuff, would you? Looks like something's been on in some recent <laughs> Your husband and wife wouldn't allow you to do that, would they? They would want something that's presentable. You know, we, we're not to take any old teaching. We're not to take anything that we see. Many, many believers today are, are so diluted in what they do. They're, they're here, they're here, they're listening to this, they're listening to that. They're never focused on what God wants to do. And yet we're told to buy from him. Is he the source of the things that you are invested in today? If they're not, then let them go. Let them go. And as we invest in the things of God, we will, we will be in a place when troubles come, when situations come our way. So we're not shaken of talk of recessions. We're not shaken of talk of global crisis or fuel crises. These are just the birth pains. We need to deal with the spiritual things today. We have to have our minds on the spiritual things. Many people will get caught, even in the church, will get caught up in them things. But God is saying, focus on me. Look above. 
on the spiritual things. Joseph wisely stocked up. He put food in, in the storehouses, which I, you know, what I want to say today is like a, a type of church. We should be the storehouses today, giving spiritual food for those who are, who are starving and in need. And there are many in the world today who are spiritually starving, impoverished, in, can't say the word, <laughs> that word, yeah. and, in, and are in desperate need today. We're called to be stewards of heaven's storehouses, to meet the spiritual needs of the people. And sometimes these spiritual needs are a need that they don't even know they need. That's why it's so important that we, we, we do evangelize and we speak to people and we share the testimonies of what God does for us. Because sometimes, I know in my own life, before I came to Christ, there were, there were things that I needed and affected my life. I had no idea. And the world out there are, are in spiritual hunger today. It's just the fields are white unto harvest. There are many people who, who are destitute within their lives spiritually, whether they realize it or not. They might live in yachts and mansions, but they're spiritually destitute today unless they have an encounter with it and become saved through the Lord Jesus Christ. They may be fat on the sin of the world, eating on the diet of the world. But let me just tell you that diet, when the times come, a bit like that foolish, foolish man who built his house upon the sand, it will not sustain them. And I believe that it's at that time that the church has to be seen as that storehouse who are real prepared, that the doors that we, we heard about today are open to the people, that the people will come. The people will come because they see that the world offers them nothing. The politicians lie to them. They use them. The governments want to take from them. Your friends will let them down. Partners will let them down. And yet, today, we have a saying in Jesus Christ. He will never let you down. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And I believe there will be a transference that comes at that times. It will come. We're going to read from Deuteronomy 28 and 12. It says, the Lord will open the heavens, the storehouses of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season, and to bless all the works of your hand. You will lend to many nations, but borrow from none. The Lord will make you head and not the tail, if you pay attention to his commands. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God, and that I, that I give you today, and are careful to follow them, you will always be the top and never the bottom. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. You know, we need we need to see times, don't we, as that transference. We've heard it in the last few weeks, that, that transference of, of wealth, but I'm talking spiritual wealth as well, where the hunger is in people's lives. And there are many counterfeits in the world today. People are spiritually hungry, so they're seeking spiritual things. They're going into false religions. They're seeking, they're seeking answers everywhere when, when we should be the answer. We should be that store answer that they're finding in the believers and they're finding in Jesus Christ everything that they've been longing for. And there is a transfer that, transference that, take, that takes place. Jesus said, Come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burdens are light. Jesus wants to exchange today and encounter people. He's an amazing saviour. We've seen the passage we read about Joseph. He said, when all Egypt began to feel the famine, and people will begin to feel famine, spiritual famine, in, in the times ahead. The people cried out to Pharaoh, or to Egypt, which is a type of world. They cried out, and then Pharaoh told the Egyptians, go to Joseph and do what, he, do what he tells you. When the world don't have the answers. 
But the story goes on to say that they visited numerous times. There was a stripping away of things. So at first they came to exchange for money. Mm -hmm. Then what they received ran out. They exchanged them for animals. And it goes on to say they exchanged even, even their land and their lives. They become, they become almost servants, if you will, to Pharaoh. And Joseph moved them into the cities. <coughs> now we need to see people who have their lives sometimes stripped away. We sometimes think that things happen all at once, but God is, God is moving. He's beginning to strip things away. Even in the times that we've gone through right now, I believe he's been appealing away in, in, in lives out there. You know, I, you see it. You see it as well as I do. People do not have the confidence in the things they once held. So precious banking systems, governments, health systems. They've been peeled away. But I believe there's times coming when we'll be further stripping away them things. In, similar to what that, that passage I've just shared within, within Joseph took place, where the people came and they exchanged money, then they exchanged land. Ultimately, they, they exchanged themselves. And God is looking for life exchange today. It's what he desires most. And that can come through the, through the troubles that I believe are ahead, because I believe there's further shakings. And I'm sharing this because, you know, we have a patient and loving God, don't we? But he will shake nations where, he, where sin abounds. You know that today? It's the same God yesterday, today, forevermore. We see that, he, you know, he will, he will even use, you know, situations for judgments on nations. And if we were to look at our nation today, you would have to say it's a sinful it's a sinful nation. It's full of it's stooped in wickedness in many ways. And it's in defiance to, to the living God. And they're in spiritual drought. The nations are in spiritual drought. And it's not a hold pipe bomb that's needed. It's a downfall from heaven that's needed today in our, in our lands. I want to read now from 2 Chronicles 7 and 13. Passage that I'm sure you, you're well familiar with. 2 Chronicles 7 13. It says this, I'll read it out. It says, If I close the sky so there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send a plague amongst my people, and if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin. And heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I'm sure many of you have read that passage many, many times. But I believe that that is still a mandate for the church today that people need to take hold of. Will we, will we be a people who humble ourselves and pray and seek his face? It says here that he will forgive their sin. So forgiveness of sin is needed in our nations today. And he said, I will heal their land. I believe, if you allow me, I believe that land can be the lives of people today. As we heard earlier, given you about soil. You know, people, God will heal and restore lives today. But there are conditions that need to be met there, and then conditions can only be met by God's people. Do you know that? That they would humble themselves and pray and seek His face. Because I believe this is going to be so important in the days ahead. In the Bible, an east wind often represented almost like a judgment that came across the land. It was symbolic of a judgment against wickedness and pulling down of ungodly establishments. I believe we'll see an, an east wind within, within our nations today. But I want to say there is good news that there is a wind of the Spirit that sends. And as I prepared this, the Lord is saying that he's, he's going to release his wind as well. Yeah. Not only the supernatural can you have two winds. Yeah? God is going to release his wind as well. 
and it will blow wherever it pleases. It is not bound by direction. And for those believers who would understand the times, would understand the seasons, and are prepared, they can embrace them, they can embrace that wind, even in the midst of troubles, so that they can receive supernatural blessings and protection, not only from themselves, but be able to give it away, give it away to the people. And this wind will cause a distinction to be made in the land where people will recognize believers being fruitful, not carrying the burdens, not being impacted in the same way that they are in difficult times, that they are, they are fruitful. And it will be the hand of God, it will be that wind upon their lives, that, that blessing. And the Lord does this to reveal himself to people. I, I, I say it again, you know, his heart is for the people today. We have to prepare ourselves so we're ready in season. So when that wind blows and difficult times come, people will see you, will see the church as a storehouse and see a distinction. What is different about their lives? Why are they not, why are they not broken down? Mm. Why are they not affected like I am? Mm. Why do the things that cause stress and anxieties and fears upon many not affecting them? Mm. What is it they've got that we don't have? They'll turn away from the things the world is offering and look that Jesus look for Jesus Christ that is represented through your lives today. That's right. He wants to reveal himself. He says in Deuteronomy eleven and fourteen, then I will send rain on your land in in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you will gather in your grain new wine and olive oil. He wants us to be a people who are blessed today. God desires to bless his people. He desires his people to be that gateway into, into blessing other people through salvation today. And the church, me and you, have a pivotal role to play within this today. So we've got to be people who learn to grasp the season we're in, prepare ourselves, and discern the times that are coming so that we're ready, we're, we're able. In them, in them times, not only stand, but be of distinction, become completely separate in, in the way that we operate in the world, and people will see that within your life today. Amen? Amen. Amen. So hopefully this morning, you know, you've been stirred this morning. If there's anything I've talked about this morning, there's provoked you, or the Lord's been revealing things to your life. Maybe it's, you know, you, you, you recognize this area of your life that need awakening again. That maybe you've gone a bit dim. Maybe you're somebody who the Lord you know is called to be a watchman, to be a voice, to be somebody who will blow a trumpet in, this, in these times. But you've maybe thought that's for another season. I want to pray for you today. Or even if you want to be somebody who can, you know, wants to align themselves, to prepare themselves for what God is doing. Let's pray this morning. Amen. Amen.